I believe that the next frontier in one-on-one -on -one analytics will be emotional analytics, not sentiment analytics, emotional analytics. Emotions drive decisions and actions, for better or for worse. We have to make sure people are informed about how we are using those kind of powers indeed to make sure that we are using them for good also. Now, we are not just talking about understanding emotions, I'm talking about recreating them for users. About three years ago, I was sitting in that very comfortable armchair. On my left was a young couple, a young lady with a boyfriend. On my right, a young Japanese couple, didn't speak much English. Behind me, a grandmother and a grandson. At one moment, sitting there, I catch the eye of that young lady on my left. I never met her before. <laughs> I never seen her before, I never spoken to her, but I knew exactly what she was thinking. Exactly. Her boyfriend had no idea. <laughs> no, 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 no. It may not be... It's not what you may think. <laughs> but I'll come back to that story later. Um, emotions are made of what Vladimir Yankelevich called le je ne sais quoi ou le presque rien. The almost nothing and the I don't know what. And I'm just putting those there so you can say in French I have no accent. <laughs> Part of what we're doing there is that these elements of emotions are put together, they are transient, they are very elusive, but they resonate among us in a very profound and sometimes mysterious way. Sometimes, when we look at those, we understand that regardless of our culture or where we come from, they really bring us together and they are deeply rooted in our humanity. It's actually... Pretty strange to see how people play games. You probably have been in the pub where a game is being played. And a score, they score a goal, a try, a touchdown, and people start high-fiving each other. If the accomplishment is really good, then they start hugging each other. People they never met before. And you never see again afterwards. But you're sharing that experience with strangers of something that's really profoundly coming out of you. People play games in very strange ways, too. I've never seen people getting so involved and emotionally implicated when they play games. They, they pound the machine, they yell at the machine, and they get so involved in this, right? It's unbelievable how they do this. Those elements that come out of us, you wonder, can we capture them? Is there a way to be able to get at them? Well, actually, a company has done that. It's called Xeo Design. What Xeo Design does is try to understand what are the elements that are producing those emotions, capturing them, categorizing them, and then reusing them for analytics afterwards. They identified, actually, four types of fun. The first one is hard fun. Fiero, I want to crush my opponent, I'm going to win this. Actually, a sport manufacturer of goods has used this for communication, those kind of elements. The second one is easy fun. Easy fun was exploration, discovery, curiosity. The third type is serious fun. It's about zen and relaxation. And actually, an airline company has used those elements in their communication for marketing. The last one is people fun. It's having fun together, bonding, coaching, working together. Nicole Lazzaro, CEO of Xeo Design and her team, have elicited all these elements across those different ideas to be able to generate and understand how these are coming together. With predictive analytics, we can actually do two things with this. One, we can start to understand the correlation among the data and link that data with the elements I just mentioned. The second step is to take all that data and those elements we just gathered from the data we get on a daily basis and associate them with behavior and comportment. And that way, with those behaviors, we can actually recreate them with emotional models. We link those at predictive models and we can start to have something where we can recreate some part of those as well. Once we put them together and we have that going, we can say, well, it's not just about selling more stuff to more people. We can actually do something good with this. We can actually push it to the next stage. About, 
when my daughter was about three years old, she had um, tubes placed in her ears, very minor surgery, just to help with chronic ear infections. The surgeon uh, we took her to in New York City told us that they were scheduling those procedures on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Actually, they were also scheduling very sophisticated and compli complicated procedures for adults at the same time. And then they had the kids and the adults recovering in the same large recovery room. And they had empirical data to show that adults recovered a lot faster when exposed to kids that were with them there. It draws upon a sentiment of uh, an emotion of compassion, empathy, where people are saying to do this. Now imagine, like I did, the geek I am, to say, how can I capture this? Can I get that data? Can you give me, can I recreate those? Can I build those emotional models for healing together? Is it possible? Can we do this? And then you can apply those models to a whole range of patients, not even the recovery room in different places, but use that also to be able to generate those feelings. Now, if we can do that, well, why can't we just pick the elements that also help kids learn better? In mathematics, in physics, maybe there are aspects of what they are doing which is much more interesting and they want to capture that too. And take those emotional models and put them into the learning system, maybe some software that we use for learning. And if we can do that, what can we just take citizens and data on citizens and cities to take people to say, well, you like to volunteer for specific type of tasks, and why don't you go and do that and capture those models for it, too? Now, let me come back to, I'm sure you're dying to know, that young lady whose mind I was reading. <laughs> I was sitting comfortably in that armchair. About three years ago, I received an invitation to my local movie theater to see Star Trek The Next Generation 25th Anniversary, with two hours of episodes and interview from the cast. Unreal. And it was about 30 seconds of unseen footage, too. 30 seconds. <laughs> no, no, I would have paid $300 for this. <laughs> and so we're there, and at that specific moment, Patrick Stewart, Captain Jean-Luc Picard, is talking about the flute. Why is playing the flute in an episode, and how come it's a recurring theme across the entire franchise of The Next Generation? And we're like, wow, we've been wondering about this for a while. A, that finally, the answer was there. I turned to my left, and that young lady was looking at me. I knew exactly what she was thinking. <laughs> we share that amazing cultural bond for a moment. And actually, you know what? In those three hours in that theater, I felt a lot closer many times than with members of my own family. <laughs> we can do this, we can reproduce and take on those experiences and these emotions and capture them in such a way that you can recreate those experiences, make people feel better at work too. Use those models for that, it's perfectly possible. We have to be cautious, as usual, with the privacy issues, the security issues, and, and the others that might come, actually, that also are uncovered by that new usage of the data. It's very important. But it's not because we don't have all the answers that we should not be asking the right questions. With great powers come great responsibilities. <laughs> and so I believe we have to use them wisely. Thank you very much, and live long and prosper. Yeah.